Okay, uh, welcome back everyone. Uh, hope you're here. I just thought we'll uh, begin a little bit early and we'll uh, you know, try to complete the next chapter. Uh, so let's go get into chapter chapter 17. Let me just present the notes. All right, is everyone here? Or uh, I'm not sure if they're still on a break. So I'm to make sure. Okay. All right, uh, let's get into this chapter, chapter 17, talking about stewardship. Right. Uh, stewardship is basically looking after the resources, a proper use of resources and the wealth that God has created for you. There's a responsibility towards God, towards our community, towards others in need. And when we look after the resources that God has given us, we are being good stewards. Now, remember, when it comes to stewardship, we can be a good steward, we can be a bad steward. Right? It is to, uh, you know, effi efficiently manage what God has given us and to effectively pass it on to the next generation. The Lord Jesus, in his ministry, talked a lot about stewardship. Right? He, he gave parables uh, highlighting the principles of stewardship. Right? In many places, uh, Jesus spoke about stewardship. He said, this, this is what stewardship is, right? where, we, where we be effective, where we use what God has given us in the right way, and multiply it and bless the nations and, and bless the succeeding generations as well. So let's look at a few scriptural principles. Look at a few scriptural insights that you and I can apply when it comes to stewardship. So the principles that you and I can apply when it comes to stewardship. Number one, honor God with your personal finances. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase, so that your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with wine. One of the most important principles right, that each one of us live in is to understand the fact that everything is owned by God. God is, as the creator of the heavens and the earth, God is the one who owns everything. He, you know, the scriptures say that he owns the cattle on the hills, the gold is mine, the silver is mine. That's what God says. The wealth we have and the positions we all have, uh, while you know we use them, we use the possessions that God has given us, but it's very important to give back to him. This is our way of recognizing that God is the owner of all things. When we give back what God has given us, we are just giving one tenth, which is our, our tithe. It's just one tenth of our personal income. We're giving it back to God and we're saying, God, what you have blessed me with, as a good steward, I want to give it back to you. I want to honor you. And we give it back to the church. The Bible is very clear. <clears throat> the Bible is very clear about uh, being good stewards when it comes to giving unto the Lord. 
right? Uh, because when we understand that everything that we have comes from God, you know, giving back to God is not very difficult. <laughs> Let me give you this example, right? Uh, for example, if we have a small salary, we start off small, right? So, for example, uh, the type that we'll have to give is maybe 3,000 rupees, one-tenth, right? Uh, a small amount. So, we can, okay, it's okay. But as we keep growing, God begins to bless us. And we get more income and we get more. And God blesses us. He opens up the heavens. He just chooses to bless us. And he blesses the work of our hands. And we have plenty. Now, for example, we're earning quite a lot. Now we have to give one tenth of it. You know, when the amount is small, it's okay. But as the amount becomes bigger, sometimes we may think, oh, how can I give so much? But remember that what you're giving is you're giving it to God. It's going to God. It's God's, what is what is God's is God's. And you are just giving a portion back to him. It's not like God wants it. It's not like I, God is saying, okay, uh, you know, you, uh, I need it. No. He's saying, when you do this, you're being good stewards. You're recognizing that everything comes from God. Always tithe from your individual income. Malachi, very common verse, 3, 10 and 12. Uh, bring the full amount of your tithes to the temple so that there will be plenty of food there. Put me to the test and you will see that I will open the windows of heaven and pour out on you in abundance all kinds of good things. Right? Put me to the test is what God is saying. You give to God and I will open up the heavens. Verse 11 says, I will not let insects destroy your crops or your grape wines will be loaded with grapes. Now, we may not have crops and grape wines, but what he's saying is, I will not let the enemy. What does the enemy do? He comes but to kill, steal, and destroy. He comes to steal. But when you give to God, when you give what belongs to God, that is ten, one tenth of your income to God, if you receive a salary each month, give it to God. One tenth of that, if you receive it every two weeks, one tenth of it goes to God. Uh, Right? And and why is this important? Because when we do this, we are blessing, we are saying, God, everything that I have is from you. And I and we know that I have to give offerings to God. Right. Offerings are very important. Right? We, we offer what we have to God, uh, additional being generous, giving, uh, giving to help others in need. Uh, we work, we earn, but money is not everything. Right? Money does not control us. Remember this. Money does not control us. We control it and we put it to use. We do not put our trust in money, but we put our trust in God who empowers us to make money. Money is not evil, but money is the root of all evil. Money is not evil. We need money for ministry, for for our family, uh, for our children, for looking after the needs that we have. We need money. But money doesn't control us. We put the money to use and we say, God, you provide for us. And so we be generous. We learn to share. We now many of us are students. We may feel, hey, how do I? I, I only have so much with me. How can I be generous? So you, one of the things that you can do is be generous in small things. So when it comes to big things, right, you'll be able to freely give. Right, uh, get into this habit or this attitude or this character of being generous. It could be very very small. Um, but it could be a blessing to people, right? Give to the poor, the widows, the orphans, right? Uh, again, just being generous with the funds, with what God has blessed you with. Now, even as you do it, do it quietly. Give towards people, uh, you know, do it with a sincere heart. 
and you know we don't want to give and then take photos and put it on all our streaming platforms see this is where i gave jesus said right if you give don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing just just do it quietly and what god sees you do in private do this and the father who sees you in private will reward you right so even as you give do it quietly you don't have to make a big show of it uh, but do it with a sincere heart of just caring and loving and supporting others corporate tithing and giving right? again this is where if you're owning an organization um, you know you get a net earnings or the net income that you make uh, in an organization now especially if it's business sometimes those net incomes come uh, quarterly or they may come half yearly they may come monthly they may come yearly right it, it all depends on the kind of business the person is doing uh, again you tithe over that and you also try to bless people uh, with what god has given you right um, uh, standing up against injustice and other causes uh, now in an organization you know, i'm sure many of us have heard ngos right uh, where ngos they work with social evils like child labor slave uh, slavery child trafficking prostitution uh, homeless uh, helping during times of epidemics natural disasters uh, maybe helping the poor with education uh, all of these things are uh, you know are are organizations that we can stand with um, you know, as a church, we have also been able to help uh, certain you know, organizations when, when epidemic, epidemics, especially when COVID hit, we were able to help. And so what we're doing is we, we are trying to you know, help other causes. It's not only about APC or it's not only about our church or our ministry and my business and my work, uh, but you look at the bigger picture. Right? That, uh, how can I be a blessing? to others how can i be a good steward of what god is uh, doing in my life right then we are all responsible for creation so we uh, psalms 115 verse 16 the heaven even the heavens are the lords but the earth has given the children to the children of men so the scriptures teach us that you know all through from the time of Adam and Eve, God told Adam, you tend the garden, you cultivate the garden. God gave Adam the responsibility. Um, so he had to look after it, he had to guard it. And so we also have the same responsibility. God has put us in a world, and in this world, uh, well, you know, there is there's so much of evils that may be happening, but God has given us a responsibility to care uh, for creation around us. Right? Now, you may say, how can I... In a country like India, we have 1.4 billion people. How can I uh, change things that are happening in our nation? You can, right? Uh, a journey of a thousand miles starts with one step, right? So it could just be small, right? Uh, it's keeping your surroundings clean. People notice it. You're doing your part. You're being a good steward, right? Just knowing that, okay, uh, this, this place that I'm living in, it's what God has given me. I have to be responsible. I have to be a good steward. And I need to know how to, um, you know, keep this, care for this place that God has placed me in. Um, and, and, and so these, you know, it may not be a big reward to go and say, hey, you, you know, did this. No, but in God's eyes, it is something that will bring honor to him. Right. If you're somebody who you know eats probably a chocolate and you take that wrapper, search for a dustbin and throw it in there. Say, God, you have created you now this world is yours. I don't want to, you know, make it uh destroyed by these simple things. I mean, nobody's gonna come and give you an award for it. But what is gonna happen is God will be pleased. Why you're being a good steward. Nobody has clapped for you and said, Good job. God is pleased. God is pleased with an attitude of stewardship. And so we must also be able to do this in our lives, right? being good stewards. Right. Uh, let's get into our next portion, that is the workplace and you. Is there any, anybody has any questions? You have any questions? Any thoughts and questions? 
Okay, we'll just do chapter 18 and then we can close, right? It's uh, talking about career growth. Now, when we talk about career growth, now, all of us, no matter where we are, we have gifts, we talked about it, we have gifts, we have grace, we have skills, we have knowledge, we have experience, expertise. None of us want to stay in the same place. Right? None of us want to be same place for the next five years. We want to grow. Right? We want to see people grow from strength to strength. That's God's design. He wants us to grow. Right? Um, and, and so as believers, how can you and I um, reach, or let's look at these three, how can you and I become the person that God wants us to be, reach the place and the purpose? Remember we talked about this in the initial, I think it was chapter two, talked about the person, the place, and the purpose. And Abraham, God changed the person. No longer Abraham, Abram, but you're Abraham. Two, I'm going to take you to a place, right? To a place. And why am I taking you to that place? Because I will bless you. The sevenfold purpose of blessings that God gave Abraham. I will bless you. I will make you a father of many nations. I will bless those who bless you. Uh, I, will, I will curse those who curse you. I will, I will be with you. You know, sevenfold blessings. So how can you and I relate these scriptural insights to career growth? Now, career growth can involve moving from one organization to another. There will be times we'll have to do it. There's nothing wrong about it. So let's look at a few points on career growth. You can enjoy the rewards of your work. We talked about this, right? Uh, we work hard, we will enjoy the rewards. When you're working in a field, you know, when a farmer is working in the field and he's the scorching heat, he's sowing those seeds, and then the next day, or then the next entire week, he's there, he's watering the entire space, right? The entire land. And then he goes about cutting off the weeds that are there, that are growing in between. But at the end of the day, when the harvest comes, he pulls out all those harvests and he looks at them. It is such a great reward for the for the workers for the laborers it would be the greatest reward now it's like you know for me it was you know you try to cook something you cook you do go through all the things okay you do put on all these uh effort and then at the end of the day you sit on the table and you eat what you have cooked that's a joy that uh that, that's a reward that you will enjoy oh man, i made this now how it comes out we don't know uh, but you enjoy the rewards of your work. Same thing. You work hard, God will open doors, and God will raise you up. You don't work hard, doors will not open, and there will be no growth. We see that it's directly relatable. You work hard, God is faithful to open the doors. If we're not working hard, we're praying God open doors, very unlikely that God is going to open those God is going to first make sure that you are able to work hard, discipline yourself, and then he opens the doors. Right? Remember, promotion comes from the Lord. Psalm 75, 6 and 7. For exaltation comes neither from the east nor from the west or from the south, but God is judge. He puts down and exalts another. First Peter 5, 6. Humble yourself under God's mighty hand so that he will lift you up in his own good time. Promotion comes from the Lord. You look to God. You walk yielded. You walk humbly. Right? Yielded to the purposes of God. Continue to learn. Continue to grow professionally. Continue to develop your skills. He will make sure that he will open doors for you to get your promotion. But the fact is, the point is, you got to stay yielded, you got to stay humble, you got to work hard, you got to learn and develop your skills. The right time when God opens a door for promotion, oh, you will feel the taste of that promotion is going to be so, so 
fulfilling in your life, right? Excellence also will be rewarded. Doing an excellent job will cause you to be promoted. Strive for excellence. So excellence is not a one-off thing. It's not like being excellent in one and being not being excellent in another. Excellence is to show to show to do an excellent job consistently, continually. Don't settle for average. I always say this, right? You aim for the moon, you'll reach the stars. Right? Always try to do your best. Excellence will be rewarded, right? So, so what about us in ministry? Continue to learn, continue to grow. If you feel God has called you for worship as a worship leader or you're in the worship ministry, continue to learn and grow. Try to become excellent at that. If it's preaching, if it's teaching, learn. There's a lot of things that we have to learn. Try to continue to grow, be excellent, and God will reward you. All of a sudden, people say, hey, why don't you come here and you know, preach or teach? Those are opening. Why? Not because... Uh, you know, we were just sitting and doing nothing. No, because we worked hard. We're trusting God. God's grace is upon us. Those will open. Right? Wisdom opens doors. Proverbs 12, 8. A man will be commended according to his wisdom, but he who is of a perverse heart will be despised. Right? Wisdom opens doors. Uh, the ability to use the knowledge, use your competencies to solve problems, to determine solutions, to envision the future, will open doors. The greatest example for this is Joseph. He interpreted the dream. God gave him the wisdom to come up with a solution for that dream. He envisioned the future. He knew what action to be taken. And the, and the, and the, you know, the Pharaoh at that time said, who better than you? To handle the whole situation all of a sudden from the prison to the palace second in command over entire egypt which is the strongest nation at that time why because of wisdom joseph was not like a strong man who was a warrior who could fight everyone no he just used wisdom right second in command you put a ring on him you're second in command so develop the ability of not only gaining knowledge and understanding, but to bring it to a place to resolve matters, to create, to innovate. How can you do that? In ministry, ask God for wisdom. God, I'm ministering in this area. This is a town or this is a village. These are the needs of the people. I see that the youth are struggling with this. The families are struggling with this. Uh, there's there's suicidal rates, so this is what is happening. This is the you know the enemy is working in this way. Give me the wisdom to come up with the right strategy to minister to people. God will give you the wisdom. If it's college students, God give me the wisdom. You know, college students are not going to sit and listen to an entire fifteen minute sermon when you're preaching to them for the first time. Give me the wisdom to speak what is right, what is needed that can enter their hearts and minister to them. Give me the wisdom, as you know, as in ministry, you may, you may have to deal with problems. Give me the wisdom, God, to deal with this problem, to come up with the right solution. Now, husband and wife may have problems. They come up to you as a leader or a pastor. They say, this is what is happening. What do I do? I'm ready to leave my wife. I'm ready to leave my husband because he did this to me. So that's when wisdom comes in. Right? In the workplace, your, your, your colleagues may say something to you. Lord, give me the wisdom. Wisdom is not always speaking, but also learning to stay silent at times. Wisdom opens the right doors. A sincere heart and gracious lips will get you noticed. Don't neglect walking in the gifts of the Spirit or in the fruit of the Spirit. Right? Uh, you will get noticed. People will notice you. And people will give you access to other people. People will give you access to places of authority. All of a sudden, you may feel, hey, there are so many people better than me. I always feel that. Uh, even sometimes I do feel it now as well. I always feel there are so many of them. Well, you know, much better. 
right? But sometimes, you know, God looks at the humble. He says, you know, the quieter, the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. These are attributes that can win, that can win you over, that you that people will give you opportunities just because of the fruit of the spirit. Right? Now here's the interesting part. The more you are given, the more you have to deliver. With great powers comes great responsibility. You want a bigger role? You want promotion? Greater the role, greater the responsibility. And sometimes you feel, okay, we go up the ladder, the work is much lesser. You just tell people to get it done. Now, there are, there are benefits of a higher role, but there are also responsibilities. Uh, are you able to fulfill the responsibility? Do you, do you, a higher role and a higher position will need require skills and competencies. Are you working on developing those skills and competencies? So now you're, a, for example, you're a team leader. All of a sudden, you get into, you become a manager. You cannot do what the team leader does. You have to prepare, be, learn, grow, and become and understand that you are now a manager and you need to work as a manager. And from a manager, you may become a senior manager. And you can't think like a manager. And from a senior manager, you get into being the operations manager. And you get into operations, you're, you're, you're heading an entire team, multiple teams. So you got to be quick thinking. you got to make decisions. You can't say, I will let you know after two days. Why? Because the entire, like four or five teams are waiting for your approval. Right? You, it takes, you need to have the capacity to build those personal competencies, prepare, learn, grow, and deliver, and get ready to do the role that God has given you. You know, many a times people pray for promotions, but after they get it, they say, God, this is too much. I'm not able to take it. And that's the wrong attitude, right? You ask for it, hire the role, hire the position, hire the deliverables required. Same thing here, right? The stakes get higher as you go up. Um, the pressure will be more. You've got to face, you know, now each one of you are students, right? Uh, and you may be doing something in ministry or in the workplace, but uh, you know, five years or ten years down the line, if you're in the workplace or in ministry, you go higher and higher. There's a price you have to pay. There will be more and more pressure. Right now, as students, you may not have find any pressure. There's no pressure, right? If you'd like, you can attend the class. If you'd like, you can, you know, not attend. It's, there's no pressure as such, right? But when there'll come a time. As you go higher, as God opens doors, you move from one level to another. What will happen is the stakes get higher. The pressure gets more intense. And then you've got to check if you're ready for this. Mentally, emotionally, spiritually, uh, there are competencies that you will have to build to stand strong. Right? And then there'll come a time when you say, God, I really need you. I can't do this on my own. You're in the right place. You're in the right place when you say that. Right? And never forfeit something that God has opened for you. Never give it away just because the pressure is too much. Right? Uh, if you feel that you know uh, ministry is going to be easy, uh, not so. Right? You will find all kinds of pressures. Uh, but you got to be strong mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Go back to the, you know, to that silent prayer room of yours it's that quiet time with the lord gain draw strength from him so that you will be able to stand right? now there'll be times you'll have to be patient through unemployment there'll be seasons when of unemployment and this is a very difficult time right so for example somebody is working for 15 years and all of a sudden you've either been asked to leave or you have left the job looking for another job now the season of employment can be very difficult and then many of them will say hey you wait god will give you the right opportunity that's right that's true to wait on the lord is very important but waiting does not mean sitting idly right it does not mean you don't prepare right Waiting does not mean inactivity. It means that you wait 
patiently expecting God to work, right? Uh, and I think in this time and season that we are living in, you know, waiting is not something that we want to do, right? We just want things to be in place immediately. You know, this fast growing generation that we are in, everything is happens in a click of a button, right? Uh, things are, things, life is so comfortable, right? Everything can get done. You don't even have to go out. Uh, and sometimes we don't want to wait. But waiting time is important. It helps you to become patient. It helps you to trust in God. It helps us to, uh, you know, prepare ourselves for the next stage of our life. And I've said this many a times. When you look at the Bible, um, God is a God who made people wait. That's how he works. Right? So whether it's business, whether it's your work, whether it's your family, whether it's marriage, whether it's children, God can make you wait. There was Joseph who waited 17 years, David waited 17 years, Moses waited 40 years. All of them waited. Right? Abraham waited 25 years for the promise. So waiting is the time that is required. It just builds us up. It makes us trust God. And we get closer to God. But in this waiting time, don't lose hope. Remember, God is a God of restoration. We may sometimes feel, hey, I've lost one year, I lost two years, or I may have lost, you know, five years. Now, what am I doing? Why is nothing happening? And it may get us weary and worried. But remember, God is a God of restoration. He can restore those five years in one year. He can restore your, your, your gifts and skills and talents. He's able to restore them, right? He's able to restore that season of employment, whatever you've lost, he's able to restore it. And you expect him to do that, right? So it's not a time of discouragement. You know, many of us may continue to do your third year here, but then after that, you may be looking out for a job or a ministry opportunity. It could be a time of you no know, waiting. Don't be discouraged. Wait on God. Keep working. Keep waiting. And then there'll be times when you get a new job, right? You get a new opportunity, a new job, right? You look ahead as you step into your new job. Look ahead and see what God has for you. Be excited. Put the past behind. Don't carry. Now, this is very important. Don't carry what happened in your previous organization, the previous bosses, your previous understandings, all of that into your new company. Remember, this is a new place. What has happened has happened. It's gone. You move on from there. And Paul says, I press on for what is ahead. I hold on with confidence in God because he who started a good work will continue it until it brings perfection. Right. Never take baggage from your previous company. This is what my manager told me in my previous company. Maybe my manager in the new company will be the same. So we've already judged the person. And then when we begin to work with him, we already hate him. Or we already don't like the way he talks. He may say, hey, can I get the report by 5 p.m.? You may feel offended. There's nothing wrong in that. Right? So, so we got to let go of everything of the past. And look at what is ahead. And look at the new openings and the new doors that God has opened for you. Right? Don't hold on to baggage. Baggage can really bring you down. Right? Let go of it. Hurts and baggages that we try to carry. Um, you know, just move ahead from that. Uh, be courageous when you move from employment to over, uh, to entrepreneurship. Now. Let me just share a few thoughts here and uh, and we really close, right? Uh, employment to uh, employment to entrepreneurship. So how does this work? Now maybe some of us will are employee employed, right, in an organization. Uh, there'll come a time when you feel that hey, God is calling me to do something on my own. I want to start my own business. I want to be an entrepreneur on my own. Now, that's a transition. 
and you're, you're, you're moving from one place to another right you're taking a step of faith looks like abraham right you get up with your tent abraham and i will take you to a place which place i'm not going to tell you yet but i'll take you there so when it comes to moving from employment to entrepreneurship or you're starting or, so for example you're working in a church or you're working in a ministry and there'll come a time when god will place it in your heart to start your own ministry that's exciting it's an exciting step right but even as you plan as you do that be wise plan it in the right way share it with your at the right time share it with your uh, with people that you trust don't share it to the whole world share it to people who you trust who you know can give you godly counsel and godly input right and as you make that transition now for example if you're alone right you live alone or you have parents that you look after make sure that you have some kind of financial stability at least six months right ahead if you have a wife and children you got to be well prepared financially okay six months even if i transition from here to here from an employee employee to starting my own ministry or my own business for the next six months i have the funds required i have the resources required so i will continue to provide for my family and for my children that will not be hindered the mistake that people make is hey god spoke to me so i gotta do it and i do it right now without planning without preparing no that's not how god works by like god you know he when he gives you an idea a strategy most likely he gives you the strategy gives you the idea but he expects us to plan and do it well and he expects us to think and do it right um, so it's very important it's a very exciting journey going from being an employee to uh, being an entrepreneur or working in an organization to starting your own very very exciting journey even as you do that make sure that you do it the right way be wise step in at the right time and uh, you know this even as you do that you step out in faith right it's a it's a it's a journey of faith and so uh, all of a sudden you feel feel hey i'm walking on the water right now uh, so it's exciting right? uh, but even as we do all of this uh, we trust god that god will work in our lives right so any questions any thoughts uh, before we close uh, we've almost uh, completed our portions, but uh, a few more very interesting chapters. What I'd like to uh, encourage you to do is to feel free and uh, maybe go through these points. And even as you go through it, right, if there are certain points you feel that can really help you, just make a note of it in your book or uh, on your personal study. Make a note of it. Say, God, okay, this is one point that I'll work on uh, maybe during this week or during this month. Make a note of it. Uh, keep reading it. Keep reviewing it. Um, and no matter what, whether ministry, whether in the marketplace, uh, you can apply this godly principles, right? Uh, all right. So thank you so much uh, for joining today. Uh, next week, we'll meet again and we'll continue from where we stop. Right. Have a great week ahead. I'll see you next Monday. God bless you all. God bless.